When we're naming ionic compounds that contain transition metals, we always have to look to the anion to find out what the charge is on the metal. Because transition metals can have different charges, also called oxidation states. This means that they can lose different numbers of electrons depending on what they're interacting with. So for example, the iron 2 ion means that iron has lost two electrons and so this is the iron 2 plus ion. So when you see that Roman numeral 2 that tells you what the charge is on the metal. The iron 3 ion has lost three electrons so it has a 3 plus charge. And these are the common oxidation states or charges of iron. Copper 1 ion is a common charge for copper. That's just the copper 1 plus ion. Copper 2 ion is copper 2 plus ion. So let's see how we name these compounds when we see a formula. For example, we could look at chromium and two chlorides. So it may help to break these up into the charged ions that you see. And we don't know what the charge is on chromium yet. To find that, we have to look to the anion. So we have two chlorides, and we know from the periodic table, since chlorine is a halogen, it forms a 1 minus chloride ion. So we have two chloride ions, so we can add up the charges. That's two minus charges. And overall, whatever the positive charges are, when we add those to the minus charges, the overall charge on this compound is zero. So that means that we must have a two plus charge on the metal. So this must be chromium two plus. So if we write the name of this, we have to indicate that chromium is 2 plus, and we use the Roman numeral for that. So this compound would be called chromium 2 chloride. So let's look at an example where we have more than one metal ion in the formula. So Fe2O3, this is some kind of iron oxide. We don't know what the charge is on iron yet, so let's add up the charges on oxygen to figure out what iron's charge is. Uh, we know from the periodic table that oxygen forms a two minus anion, so we have three of those in the formula. O2 minus, we have three of them, so that means we have six negative charges. And when we add the positive and negative charges up, they should equal zero since we have no overall charge on that compound. And we have two iron atoms, or two iron ions, and their charges must add up to six, since six plus charges and six minus charges will cancel each other out and equal zero. So uh, one thing you can do is divide the total charge by the number of ions, and that will tell you the charge on iron, so iron in this case is 3 plus, and we have two of those. So we need to indicate with the Roman numeral that we have the iron 3 ion. So this compound would be called iron 3 oxide.